Good morning. First of all, on behalf of Royal University of Bhutan, I would like to thank ALT for inviting us for this conference to remember Professor Robin Masson and to share the educational technology at Royal University of Bhutan. Let me introduce myself. I'm Sonam Benjo, working as a manager for educational technology at Royal University of Bhutan. I've been involved in this educational technology from mid 2010. Sorry. From mid 2010, and before that, I was working as a network administrator or the system administrator, administrator looking after the servers, networks at the member colleges. So I joined my office in 2005. Uh, I'm newly, I mean, I'm quite new to this office. Although the office itself is the new, university itself is the new. So. Uh, I hope that you know her. She is, uh, I mean, Pro Professor Robin Mason, and you can see the some member for the workshops. And it was unfortunate for me that I didn't get any opportunity to meet her as I was involved in some other projects during the project contributed by her. So she she has visited three member colleges at Bhutan. So I'll be discussing more later. So let me give you a bit, bit brief background on Bhutan. Bhutan is a tiny landlocked country bordering with China towards the north and India towards the south, east, south and west. Ours, government, uh, ours is the constitutional monarchy and we had a landmark democratic election in March 2008. So we have population with 700,000 and we have a development philosophy called Gross National Happiness initiated by our fourth king. And we are working to, pour, uh, working to pursue those goals. So let me give you a brief background of Royal University of Bhutan. Our Royal University of Bhutan is established, launched in June 2003 through the Royal Charter signed by the, His Majesty the fourth king. And our university is distributed universities with 10 member colleges scattered across the country. We have a central coordinating office, office of the Vice Chancellor, where I'm currently working. All the activities of the member colleges are coordinated through my office, I mean, through the office of the Vice Chancellors. We have around 6,000 students in total and 300 uh, 939 staffs, including Bhutanese national and expatriates from India and other countries. Well, those are the background of my university. And you can see the distribution of the universities. Right in the middle is the coordinating office, office of the vice chancellor. And we have uh, one college which offers a degree in indigenous medicine through the local language. And we have one engineering college, two college of education, which offers a degree in education. And we have one business college. And in the extreme uh, east, east of the country, where our professor Robin has visited, she has visited this place. It, uh, this college provides arts and humanities. Well, let me share some of the contribution by the Robin Mason. Uh, and her counterpart, Frank. Uh, we had uh, two projects, each with duration of two years, starting from 2005 to 2006, then 2007 to 2008. So first project was commenced from 2005 to 2006, and that project title name, is, uh, title name was Development and Management of Sustainable System for Distributed Higher Education in Nepal and Bhutan. So the core focus of that project was uh, to gain the experience by the uh, Royal Universities from the universities like UHI, Universities of Highland and I Islands, and Open University. Since UHI has the structure, same as, I mean, structure in the sense that the di distribution of its member colleges is same like the Bhutan, like our Royal University of Bhutan. So these two universities are using various technology tools to deliver the courses to their students. So we just wanted to gain the experience on how the technology 
are being used in those two colleges to deliver the courses. And in this uh, project, we have received so many advices on the technology which are suitable for the distributed campuses. And we have conducted a number of workshops, conference, seminars on the pedagogy, pedagogy, online teaching, appropriateness, uh, ap to select the appropriate technology on the distributed university systems. And finally, a team from the university has visited the pl uh, places to study and to have a good practice in the area of sustainable rural education. But uh, unfortunately, that sustainable rural education has been looked after by another college. So I, to be frank, I don't know much about this sustainable rural education. Then after the first project, the second project was commenced from 2007 to 2008. And the title of that project was EduShare. And in that project, we had the partners from Open University, Lewis Castle College, uh, the member of UHI, and some Asian university partners, like uh, Asian university partners from the Turkey, Cambodia, Nepal, and Maldives. In that project, the quality assurance works workshop was conducted in the Sheriff's College, the place that I have shown, uh, which, lo which is located in the eastern part of the Bhutan. And in that workshop, what they did was how to validate the courses. So they even did the mock validation during that time. So due to this, the, still the validation process has been followed and is happening twice in a year. So they even developed the online courses for the sustainable rural development. And unfortunately, that one also looked after by the uh, College of Natural Resources, which offers the degree in agriculture, forestry, and animal husbandry. So st staff development was also happened uh, in order to introduce the MPhil program in universities. But unfortunately, till date, we couldn't uh, launch these programs. But I was informed that by next early 2012, it will be launched. And they, again, the team from university has visit, have visited, have visited the open university to study more about this open learn, how the courses, how the technologies are used to deliver the courses, or something like that. So after these two projects, Professor Robin and Frank published a book on Bhutan, the title Bhutan Ways of Knowing. And it is the collection of articles by the RUB, uh, I should say RUB, Royal University of Bhutan. Uh, by the Royal University of Bhutan, <coughs> lectures and the extracts from the interviews with the Bhutanese. So they've written and they published a book on Bhutan ways of knowing. Now, <coughs> let me share about the education technology at Royal University of Bhutan. Uh, what, are the uh, what are the current scenarios? What are the challenges? What are the problems that we're facing? Ours is, I should say, 100% instructor center traditional classroom face-to-face -face type education. Through that project, the concept of education technology is understood. However, we could not implement those, uh, those uh, educational technology due to lack of resources. And on top of that, our staff capability is very limited. So, in 2006, uh, <clears throat> we had a project funded by Danida to connect all the university's member colleges through white area network. So during that time, we, uh, we connected all the member colleges through white area network using IPBPN technology, but uh, with the speed of 512 kbps. Well, you can imagine that with the 512 kbps, how we can share the e-resources through that type of network. So however, we are waiting for our government. Our government is uh, laying the fiber optics throughout the country. So we are just waiting for that. Hopefully, we can upgrade our existing bandwidth. So we are being challenged by the internet bandwidth. Bandwidth is very poor, not in, uh, not in the university, but as a country as a whole, bandwidth is very poor. So, in 2010, mid 2010, we have invited, I mean, we hired a consultant from Sri Lanka, University of School, uh, University of Colombo School of Computing, 
from uh, we hired the consultant from Sri Lanka to install the module open source software. Not only install how, how to make use to how to make our stuff used to these module features. So we uh, conducted series of training. First, we trained the uh, VLE IT administrator. Second, the VLE coordinators. Third, uh, VLE administrator, coordinators, and the Dean Academic Affairs. And finally, we trained all the lecturers. All the lecturers, in the sense, uh, we have trained around 380 lecturers throughout the university. Then, due to the challenge faced by our bandwidth, connective uh, bandwidth, we installed individual module in the individual locations to overcome those challenges. However, again, we don't have any content. We launched the module on uh, 11th of May 2011 with the aim of catering to both online as well as face face uh, online as well as face to face the blended type but we are being challenged by the content we don't have capacity to convert whole the analog textbook into the e content so we are being challenged by those contents and the usability of the technology we trained our faculties how to use this model features and at at the end of the day no one is using no one is using. Uh, I was just calling my friends, what you are doing with these modules? Then my friend used to say that they don't know. I, during this training also, I had a lot, I mean, difficult time with the faculties saying that. I told them that why not start with simple learning objects like PowerPoint, PDF. Then their immediate response was, it will take 10 years. I don't know. <laughs> so we are being challenged by the usability. We are being challenged by the e-content. So in order to overcome those content uh, challenges, we would like to have network and partnership in those areas. Developing a system so that we can upgrade the capabilities of our faculties to change those mindset, the lecture-based mindset, and make them use the educational technology. Because if they, are, if they are not using the model system, then it becomes no difference with the traditional one. And as I've shared that our country is uh, mountainous due to the time, locations, and in my country to travel 180 kilometers, it takes eight hours by bus. So in, the, in such scenarios, uh, there are many uh, in-service candidates who wish to upgrade their qualifications, their knowledge, their skills. So we like to have expertise in those areas, how to deliver the courses to such uh, interested learners, students, to upgrade their knowledge, qualifications, and skills. Yes, there are many open educational resources, but in this uh, open education resources available, I see two challenges, major two challenges. One is how to integrate those open education resources into our existing infrastructures, into our existing modules. After, integra after integration, how we'll make our faculties to use those OE OE OERs? The usability point is they have been challenged. So, we need to have some sort of mechanism uh, to make our faculties to use those OERs. And to make our in-service candidates or other people who wish to upgrade their knowledge to study their choice of programs, we like to design, develop, and deliver the courses in order to fulfill the needs and requirements of such type of uh, candidates. Uh, Royal University is desperately looking for support and expertise in those area, areas initially. So, if you have any recommendations to be made <laughs> to our educational technology.
very much for that interesting talk, and uh, I, I can identify with many of the issues you have there back here as well. Um, we now have time for questions both from uh, people here and online. We'll start um, with um, uh, people who are physically here. I'm interested in, in the process uh, the, of working with your staff when the Moodle was installed, etc., etc. Mm. About how much time did the person, people that were there, spend with your staff showing them the system? And did they uh, do educational background work showing the output that would be the case for students? should it be utilised properly. I'm just wondering what the order of time was there. Uh, <coughs> the consultant from UCAC, Sri Lanka, they conducted, uh, they visited our universities, university six times. But uh, unfortunately, they didn't touch the student's part. They just touched the faculty's part because in the beginning, we have to train our faculties. If faculty is not trained, then the, we cannot think of the students. So uh, initially, they started they studied the system uh, system study throughout the colleges. Then they conducted the trainings. Uh, then they identified the persons uh, who will be involved in this module. So, like we have three persons identified. One is really IT administrator, one is really academic coordinators, and one is academic deans, so that we can move forward our module. Then we train, uh, we train those three types of people, and finally we train all the uh, lecture faculties. But sad part is, out of 380 faculties that we have trained, only only five percent of them are using. Only five percent. So, I don't know what uh, what is the reason behind, but uh, I'm in the process of finding out because before coming here, I've uh, I've uh, distributed the questionnaires saying that how many hits do you get. So I've received two responded. They said that per day, the number of hits on the VLE site is. Greater than zero, less than five. So that's the situation right now in our country. A anyway, the UCAC, the higher consultant, they didn't touch on the student part. They just trained the faculties. Other questions here? Have, have you explored social networking at all? Um, for <coughs> students and staff sharing ideas. Social networking? Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> uh, you mean me? I mean the university. Um. Uh, let me give you an example. Uh, just now, the Facebook is very popular in our country. And as I have shared that, we have been challenged by bandwidth. They are more towards the mafia games. So it's our direction from the government saying that during office hours, you're not allowed to, uh, you have to block the social networking. So but right now, you just provide them during the lunch hours, after office hours only. So social networking, we cannot right now because people, when they started using the social network, they don't give chance to other person to use if they're using the college computers. So they're going on, keep on uh, playing um, and chatting on that social network. So right now, we're, we're controlling those social network usage. Okay, Ah. 
I'm just thinking, I didn't put the proposal, but I'm just thinking how to make those faculties to use our module system, maybe through recognitions, maybe some other means, but through recognition also, we need some export because if we, told, if we tell faculties to use module system, then what they'll do is, uh, if you tell them to use module system so that we can recognize those who are using, then what they'll do is, they'll keep on uh, uploading the PDF files, Microsoft Word files, which is no different than the traditional type. So if we don't recognize such type, then it's also not fair because they're using the module. So we need to have some process mechanism. So I'm thinking on this, how to do it. So it, we require the expertise on drawing up those mechanisms. Thank you. Uh, one, one of the factors that seems to influence the take up by staff yes. of technology in the UK, and, and, and we've been doing some work on this, is the use of technology by, by students and involving students as role models in the use of technology. Tom Cochran over here has been doing some very interesting work at Unitech in Auckland around, the, the, if you like, the developed use of technology by staff and learners in in collaboration using um, what what Tom calls our te technology stewards. Mm. It, it, it it seems to me one of one of one of the problems you, you you have and that we've been researching in the UK is that technologies that create turbulence in the lives of staff. Mm because they're not used to working with it or they don't have daily access to the technology create the problems and, and maybe um, a chat with Tom at the end of the session might, might give you some really useful insights into the way that they've been working in, in Auckland. So that would be helpful to Royal University of Bhutan. I was going to make a similar comment uh, that suggest, that's just been made that use the students as, as the drivers, but also that if perhaps you could get somebody to do a sabbatical or something like that, somebody with those skills mm -hmm. at your university in some way that was culturally acceptable, mm -hmm. um, a fellow academic leading might be um, more accepted. Sorry, did you? I was just going to say, I mean, what you've described does sound to me like the process that <laughs> probably most institutions in, in the UK have been through, um, you know, and, and probably many institutions in the UK were at the point you're at um, 10 or 15 years ago and have experienced exactly what you, you've described in the, in the early days. So, you, you know, it does feel to me that there are people with experience of having gone through that um, who, who would hopefully be able to give pointers as to, um, you know, ways of, ways of moving forward. Yes. Well, I, and I would just add to that that I think in the UK we have many academics who do use their BLE but do just put documents in it. And we're struggling here to get them to engage more actively than just put documents in it still. Um, if there are no more questions, I'd like to uh, uh, thank you very much again, Sonam, for coming all this way and giving this talk to us. Thank you very much.